Hello, it's Badrich. It's a new Vivaldi Rising video. Uh, ironically, here I have a Pale Moon release page open and this release, I haven't really tested this yet, uh, but I will, but really soon here, maybe it works a lot better. Uh, it looks like they have fixed some, some under the hood uh, issues here because it was acting weird here before I switched to, to Vivaldi. I haven't uh, used it in, a, in about a week here, so whatever. Um, I guess we should start uh, looking at how to install Vivaldi. It's not, uh, not a big topic really. Um, it's not available on um, Arch from the official repositories, so you need to search in, in the user Arch user repositories, also known as AUR. Uh, I use yay to do that. Um, this is the package I installed, AUR Vivaldi. It will pull a binary from the official Vivaldi uh, repositories, pages, really. So I cannot trust this as much as you can trust Vivaldi. Uh, you also need to install this guy, uh, Codex, Vivaldi Codex FFmpeg. There are a bunch of these similar names for them. Here is, here is another one, but this is not a, a binary package, uh, which I recommend use this. Don't use this because this is a pre-built binary. Not really sure where, where this comes from, but it works, trademark. Uh, but those are basically the two uh, packages you need. Uh, you need this FFmpeg to be able to watch videos like YouTube videos and stuff. Then if you are using um, Netflix and things like that, then you also need this Widevine uh, plugin. Not sure, maybe this is why I cannot stand alone. Premium video. Maybe this is related to that picture-in-picture -picture floating window uh, video thing. But whatever, let's not get into that. But then you can also see that you can install some... Uh, yeah, if you use a Raspberry Pi, I don't understand why you would use Vivaldi as a browser on that. But you could, and you got an ARM64 build and so on. Maybe the most interesting one is this snapshot, with, which is like uh, Vivaldi's uh, name for a beta ver version so this uh, usually have uh, more uh, cutting edge features but also is prone to to crash more so it's up to you you know I, I i am getting old so i'm using the stable version here but i have already installed this and since they are both uh, binary it's a very fast install installation but if you want to build it yourself it will take quite some time there used to be a package uh, the default package was not a pre-built binary the last time uh, I was using Vivaldi, but whatever. Um, then when you have installed Vivaldi and the first time you launch it, it will create uh, a directory under your .config uh, directory. Let's open it the correct way here. Config, and then you can find Sort this guy by name, please. Vivaldi, this directory is created. This is something I've done myself. Whatever, we get back to that. And inside this directory, the default direct directory here is the default uh, profile or the default user. So this is probably where your uh, configurations are stored. It's not really important to, to uh, know this now, but what I will do here now is uh, exit Vivaldi. Also, I noticed here that my uh, genius plan here to hide the likes and, and dislikes uh, count here, it kind of worked for the video, but I still see them, you know, but it kind of works fine anyways, whatever. Um, closing Vivaldi window here. And then you get some session saving going on in the directory. Uh, and then I will make a backup of this uh, default directory. Or let's just rename it and then it will create a new default when I start with Vivaldi here. So we can call this BU for backup. Uh, we kind of need to do this 
really soon here, but not exactly now. But we should create a, a, a little script to launch Vivaldi. You will soon see why, because you need to uh, um, open it with, with a bunch of special flags to get all uh, the, 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 the stuff. What is this Vivaldi UI update? What is that? I don't know. I don't even know. But Vivaldi stable here is the command to execute Vivaldi. If you in install the snapshot, it will be called Vivaldi-snapshot. Uh, executing this command. You see, now it opened here. We get back to this also. Uh, I think we take that in the next video, maybe create that launcher script and also set up the i3 rules and stuff. But let's not think about them now. Uh, Divaldi is not the default, blah, 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 cancel, whatever. Let's make it floating. Let's bring it to to Workspace 2. And here's this guy. Go away. And do something like that. Okay. So, first thing that we can notice here is that the fonts look terrible. Uh, and this is probably only on my stupid system here because I happen to like this uh, fixed sys font. I have it in the polybar, I have it uh, in i3, I have it everywhere. I have it as my UI font. Uh, the problem with that font is that it only supports one uh, font size. Uh, every other font size and bold text and stuff like that it just looks super weird. Uh, so I have in my font config, I have a rule that forces it, this font to always di be displayed in a certain font um, font size and uh, more or less all application uh, respect this font config but uh, not Vivaldi it uses the system font but it don't care about my rules in my font config so it displays different weird sizes of it here which makes makes it completely unusable and uh, one would think that it would be really easy to yeah, now it opened that guy there let's bring that also here to config configure this, um, you can open the settings by clicking the, this gear icon in this uh, um, panel sidebar, which is open by default. So the gear icon or Control F12, and that will open a new window with the, uh, where you can edit the settings. And the settings, most of them, they apply immediately as you enter them here. But this font setting. That is not, not something that you can set here in the default settings. There, there is no option for the UI font, which I think is a bit weird if you ask me. Maybe in the themes, I don't think so, no. Okay, uh, so what you need to do uh, to do this, and, and this is weird now because we have to kind of do uh, some advanced uh, configurations here immediately. But you enter the URL Vivaldi colon slash slash experi experiments. Then you uh, get this uh, secret page where you can set some experimental features. The feature we, we want to set here is allow for using uh, CSS modifications. And this will allow um, allow us to set a, a, a new setting in the settings here. Now it will open in this other window again. I'm sorry for this, but it's the window rules I have forcing it there, whatever. Uh, now we will have a new setting that wasn't here before. And it's this one, custom UI modifications. We, we will fix the font, don't worry about it. That's why I want to do this immediately here because it gets so annoying for you to watch this stupid text here that's uh, uh, impossible to read. And here you can select a folder um, and we select a folder here that I have created that's called new Vivaldi inside bud temp new Vivaldi. I have a directory called CSS. So we add that whole directory and I have that open here also. It's just, it just contains this uh, CSS file which will force, uh, uh, which will use this font now. We will not go into in any details here about how to do this CSS Things. We take it, take it in in a later video, maybe uh, in two videos. Uh, we change it to 16 also. So now we can restart Vivaldi again. Uh, confirm exit, yes. 
And let's also fix that i3 rules here. We can remove them. It's quick. Merge, uh, default layout, horizontal, uh, D container, Vivaldi stable, reload. So this works now. God damn it. Weird stuff going on. Whatever. Um, and then we try to execute Vivaldi again here. Vivaldi stable. Now it should open as a floating window. Great. Cancel. But now we can see the fonts are much better and readable here in the tabs. Sure, the pop-ups here is, is not perfect, but whatever. We will disable the pop-ups uh, in this video. Whoops, move the wrong window. Move him back. Because in this video, I thought let's focus on, on these default settings that we can do. Um, and now, now it's uh, more readable. So let's start from the top. We can either do it this way or we could use uh, select display all here in this uh, sidebar and that will display all available settings that you can set here in, in the settings. But let's take them one tab at a time. Default browser. Don't check at startup. Hmm. We should also, we will, we will do this uh, in a future video. We will change the, the start pages and new page here. Uh, by default, the home page, uh, and the home page is uh, when you click the home button here. It will take you to the home page, which, we, which is set to vivaldi.com by default. We will, of course, change this later, but whatever. Let's not do that now. And a lot of the settings I will do here. Uh, you, you will understand which ones uh, um, you don't need to, to set, I guess, because I have a lot of personal preferences. For example, I don't like uh, I don't like sessions. I don't use that uh, in browsers, really. Uh, so I disabled that, but I know m many people like to have the, their old tabs restored and stuff, but uh, I don't. Close window, notifications. No, I just wanted to exit immediately. Then we could set here, open settings in, in a tab. That means that if I would open the settings here now, it should open in a new tab. Maybe that is what you prefer, maybe not. I actually rather have it as a window, much rather as a window. Now I don't even know where that was. I guess it was in general. Maybe, god damn it, now I lost it. Open settings, there it was. Okay, close open window because i have such a good window manager i3 i really like when when this is uh, something you can do uh, open pop-ups in tabs which is probably not a bad idea but i will not check it use animations animations here it, it really means like the slight animations you can see when you uh, display these panels and stuff I will keep them. Use buttons in range controls. This is a range control here that you can change the page zoom with. If you change this option, then you will have buttons here instead. So you can change the zoom with these. The drawback is that the range control, uh, you can scroll it. You cannot do that with, with the these buttons I see now, but whatever, I will keep them as buttons. I think this range control is uh, stupid. Use native window. This is an interesting option, and this is one of the options that you have to restart for it to take full effect. But the native window, it means it will not use these client-side uh, decorations, which is it uses now. And if you are like... Um, some people might actually would like if they use i3 they would disable window decorations in i3 instead and then you would have Vivaldi's client side uh, decorations as we can see here but now it kind of looks weird like we have two title bars and we have these buttons that doesn't do anything on uh, uh, this window manager uh, setting this to use native window uh, yeah let's do it just to see how it looks like but we will actually not use that when we are done here. Whoops, god damn it, I'm sending, not used to work with workspaces. 
Uh, now you see we have disabled that native window and only difference is uh, just that it removes those buttons. I also think it makes it more a little bit more narrow. So it actually looks better, right? But we will actually keep this. Uh, I know this is weird. I'm going back and forth forward here but whatever use native window no thank you there is a reason for this uh, because we can hide the title bar with css and if i'm not mistaken it was uh, weird to to do that without css so we will fix it later okay that's what that option does Appearance. Use native window. Then you can set here window control position. That is, or that's these guys. So you can change side with the, those. It doesn't matter at all. We keep them at the right. Status bar at the bottom here. Hide status bar. No status bar. And then you can also choose this overlay. And then you can see uh, just URLs and sometimes other messages uh, in this little overlay thing here. Which, of course, looks uh, a lot better than the status bar, but we will use the status bar. You saw in my last video I have some hacks and stuff I need. I need the status bar for that to work. Whatever. These uh, buttons here, uh, reset address bar and reset status bar, they are, those actions are also available if you uh, right-click something. Choose customize and then you can select reset toolbar to default. It's the same as uh, resetting them from here. And what it resets is it will, I think this is kind of a bad design, to be honest. One, one of the few places where I really don't get how, how they did this. It's much better on, for example, Firefox, where you, when you can customize, at least in Pale Moon and old Firefox, you can go into a customize mode and move controls around and hide them very easily. Uh, here you can only do this. You can select customize and then remove from toolbar, and that will remove it from the toolbar. And then if we select reset toolbar, then it will show everything that you have hidden. So it's uh, kind of annoying actually, uh, when you compare it to, for example, Pale Moon's version. But I will hide here uh, a bunch of things that I just don't need. It's a good idea to try to do as much as possible with this native, um, or maybe not. And maybe it's better to do everything because you can do all of this with CSS as well. I think this is everything that you can hide. I actually like these uh, buttons that we have here. We we'll probably get back to what they do. Uh, user interface. Uh, that will change the, the size of the interface itself. So if we change this, you will get like much smaller here. You can go really, but then everything becomes unreadable again because that also affects uh, the font. It zooms everything out. Uh, and in that um, CSS I had, I actually, you can see a best look with 80% because I uh, no, had this set to 19 before and then I can set it to 80% and the font will get like resized to 16%. It's, um, it, it works, but whatever. And now we have 80%. We can see it's a more narrow uh, sidebar there and blah, 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 you know. Yeah, you get what Zoom, understand how Zoom works, I uh, uh, assume. I assume. A Zoomer. Uh, okay, so we set it to 80% and then restart again. So we get that. And I have to say that I don't know what they have done to, uh, it's probably uh, Chromium. But it's much faster to re to start uh, Vivaldi than it used to be. So now we have this, but now we can see some font stuff here gets uh, messed up. We will fix that in later videos. Uh, let's don't think about it. <laughs> Appearance. Uh, zoom here, and then you can set some window background. I don't wanna, yeah, then you get a cool background in the title bar if you would like that uh, and you can of course probably select an, a different image and things like that I don't know and whatever we will not use that 
You can also set some saturation settings here. It's kind of weird. I don't really understand how it works. What it, what's the point? And then you get this secret setting that you have to enable from that Vivaldi uh, slash experiments page. Menu. This is this menu here where the menu is located. Uh, if you want to, you can display it as a menu like this, but no one likes that. So you display it like this and maybe a burger if you would like that. When we are done, we will hide the menu completely. Um, themes, I just set it to the subtle theme here. It's very easy to create your own color themes, but Vivaldi have this very weird, and I think this is uh, how, how a lot of people think, just like some people, they think that uh, Mac, that's, uh, that's something that have a toolbar at the top, you know, Windows have a start menu, uh, and they, uh, the way they define Vivaldi, for example, ah, Vivaldi is that browser that changes color depending on which uh, website you're visiting, you know. So if we would search for something here, we'll see that it will get a different color. Well, DuckDuckGo, I guess, is uh, red color, maybe. Maybe Wikipedia, maybe it doesn't. Well, now we can see Wikipedia, then it turned black here. So I, I think this is, a, this is terrible design, really. Just prominent element like this. I, I kind of know that I am on Wikipedia. You don't have to change color of the title bar. It's stupid. But if you change, you can either uh, edit the themes and then you can deactivate this. Apply well, accent color from active page. Now you will have the same accent color on all pages. And there are some other strange settings like this here and transparent tabs and stuff but I, I just set it to the subtle theme which have this disabled by default and it is also like this nice and boring uh, gray theme that reflects my personality quite well so I like that whoa here's a big Wikipedia page just about the song something by Beatles <laughs> that's interesting okay whatever uh, themes I don't care about them, whatever. Start page, that is, uh, of course, uh, this page. We can modify this. We will disable this there uh, because uh, it, it doesn't work well with the uh, uh, wind binding uh, thing I was talking about, you know, the that we can hint stuff and, and things like that, whatever. Tabs, you can disable tabs completely if you like to, and you can show tabs. You can place them on the left side, you can place, place them on the right side, and you can even place them on the bottom. I don't know, I always liked to have tabs on the left side, and this is one of the best features of Vivaldi, in my opinion, that it works so well with a vertical tool, uh, tab bar. You could do it in uh, Pale Moon with extensions, but the, they never worked exactly as I wanted them to, but here I can just make the tabs work as I want by the default options here or by changing the default options but in the default way without installing anything else um, new tab so you can select if you want this stupid uh, speed dial page or if you want to use a different page some some people normally I wish I could use the blank page but that also doesn't work so whatever Let, let's just keep it at start page we will create own home pages and new tab pages in a later video new p tab position so when you create a new tab we, uh, it will be created uh, after related tabs I think after active tab uh, sounds logical uh, clone tabs I don't even know what cloning a tab means I guess cloning a tab close tab activation always activate related tab I don't like that I actually like close activate below in tab order so if I would close this tab it would activate this one you know because to me that is just confusing when you have like 10 tabs and then you close the tab tab number three and it activates tab number seven just because they were related and stuff I would rather have them logical and uh, in order in numerical order just like my brain Line clo close button. I, I don't know what this is. Uh, you get a close button here. I have never really figured out what this option really does, but whatever. 
Close tab on double click, no one likes that. Don't close a window with last tab, that's good, I want that. Focus page content on new tab, I think I want that as well. I'm not really sure, but I think so. Show pop-up thumbnails. Some pages show a pop-up, or tabs show a pop-up of the page. Kind of stupid, let's disable that. Show tab thumbnails, extremely stupid, disable that. Display close, I wonder if you can do this by the way. If we have this at top, because now we don't have any thumbnails. Yeah, you can have a tab bar looking like this if, if, if uh, your screen space have no value, but it kind of does for me, so. Don't show tab thumbnails, uh, display close button. I kind of like this, that the close button only is visible when you hover, but um, I actually have a tab bar looking like this. Now, why, why have a close button? It just gets confusing when I cannot activate the tabs and whatever. So don't show that. Don't display that. Uh, detect page title notification. We can have that sometimes, you know, it changes the favicon, whatever. Use unread indicator. This, uh, this is a nice little subtle feature, you know. Uh, if you open, I hate this tab page that all of them are stupid. Okay, if you open, this you can see the tab here has a small gray triangle at the up upper uh, right corner it means we have have never opened that tab and i think that's a nice feature so keep that progress bar i don't care cycle in recently used order no cycle in tab order same there you know uh, when you press control tab you can cycle tabs but if you have this cycle in recent order, then you get it jumps around. I, I don't like that and I don't understand. You can enable this and then when you press control tab, you will instead get one of these guys. I think this is really nice. Uh, and it's maybe even better to display it as a, a list like this. And then it looks like this. And you can uh, read the titles easily. And I think this is this is super nice actually. I have, and I have an, uh, I just discovered this feature like today. Whatever. Uh, switch tabs by scrolling. Of course not. Then you can scroll uh, the tab bar here to change, but no one likes that. Minimize active, active tab. I don't know what that means. Enable tab selection. I don't want that. Uh, include active tab. in uh, uh, This is regarding stacking and stuff here. And I, I, I don't use tab stacking. I know that's, that's like one of the uh, killer features of Vivaldi that you can stack tabs and tile tabs and you can actually tile windows uh, if, if you move a bunch of tabs into a tab stack and then you can tile them but uh, I'm not a fan of uh, internal uh, application tiling as I have mentioned uh, before I, I use my tiling window manager if I need that functionality pinned tabs whatever never use that anyways Mute tab audio. Play all audio. This means that it, it, if we open like a video here and play audio in that, and then open another tab and play video in uh, audio in that, it will play both audio uh, from both tabs. If you select this, then it will only play audio from uh, the active tab. And it will mute all other tabs. But that means you cannot like open like a music or podcast or something in a background tab. But then you have to have that tab active for that to work. So I, I think this is the best option because then it will only play audio from one tab. Because who wants audio from different tabs, you know. Uh, but it will prioritize the active tab. Panel, that's this guy here. Um, and you can change sides of it and stuff here. Show panel toggle uh, is uh, maybe the most stupid option here. It will add this extra button to the left here, which is really difficult to, to uh, click. Uh, and you already have the tab toggling functionality here. So th this is the most stupid option in the world. Uh, don't use that. Floating panel. Uh, that might sound cryptic here. If we enable it, it will uh, like just look like it did before. But what it actually is, uh, is that it will make this window, the flyout uh, window, so to speak, on these different uh, uh, panels, 
they will be floating above uh, the rest of the window content. If we disable this, then you will see it will be more like a tiling feature. It will resize the actual content and stuff. And I, I think floating is much nicer. Uh, you can customize these uh, panels and stuff. I never really dabbled with it. Uh, my customization consists of this. I, I uh, remove uh, remove a bunch of them. I remove window, I remove bookmarks, I remove notes, and then just keep downloads and history because sometimes I download things uh, in Vivaldi. Not that often. I often use uh, curl or gur girl together with a curl you know but sometimes it can be good to just uh, be able to see uh, downloads and of course history is always good to have handy <sighs> web panels detect page title or whatever open blah, blah 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 activate with single click pinned folder i never really use these features but whatever address bar show address bar you can hide the address bar completely don't want to do that. We kind of want, want to do that, but we don't want to do it. Um, you can change position to have it at the bottom. We actually want that uh, when we are done here. Uh, now we, everything just looks stupid, but this is what we are doing. Uh, address bar options show full address. This is like a new Chromium thing that it uh, should hide like HTTPS and stuff. And you should rely on these weird icons. Terrible, terrible ID. Show full address, people. Uh, copy and cut and code the address. I don't know what that is really. Maybe you want that. I don't know. Uh, select address on activation. Uh, I don't know. Uh, whatever. Open address in new tab with Alt Enter. I think that's the default option in most browsers. So let's just keep that. Thing is, we will disable the address bar more or less uh, soon. So whatever. Uh, Autocomplete, I actually don't like that in address bars, I have realized, uh, I'd rather just type the URLs. Uh, address field pop-up, uh, this is related to the autocomplete thing here. So this is the pop-up that comes up here, so if you disable that, nothing will pop up, but you will still get the suggestions here, the autocomplete suggestions, if you disable that also. Now, if we try to, well, whatever. Domain expansion, I don't, whatever. Profile management, it's this guy here. So you can have different profiles, which could be uh, useful. Maybe I should have used this feature and created profiles instead of making a backup and stuff. But you can, if you want to, you probably will. Disable that. And you can still manage profiles, I guess, uh, otherwise without that stupid button. Extension, visibility. I think we get back to that. I haven't really explored this, but I think we can do some cool things with it. Bookmarks. I don't use bookmarks. I use uh, Linklord. Quick commands is uh, yet another secret cool panel. If you press F2 by default, you will get a, a menu here that uh, kind of a rofy thing, you know. That you can use to both uh, like browse uh, uh, your history, uh, your bookmarks, and also execute commands. It's like a very powerful. It's like a launcher for for the browser. So if you get used to using this, which I think is not a bad idea, really, then you could get rid of all UI and just rely on this. But uh, I never gotten used to it, and I use my other extensions and stuff. But whatever, it's a cool thing. But we, I, I don't really use it. You can configure all the, the keyboard shortcuts here. Uh, I don't think we have to change any special setting here, really. Mouse. Uh, I disable mouse gestures. I just uh, launched them by accident and I never really learned to use this stuff. But I guess this is good for the new generation who comes from tablets and stuff. They, they want to swipe and, and use things like that. I don't understand it, so I disable it. John Stractor med V12. Search. Search is this thing, show in address bar, show as button, 
disable. I guess we can. I don't use that. I, I when I have an address field, I search in that. So let's just disable it uh, because enable this instead. Search in address field. Uh, show search field on speed dial, which is here. Uh, by default, Bing is set to the default uh, search for some reason, I don't know why, uh, but it is. You want to change that to at least DuckDuckGo. Same thing here, you know, as with browsers, it's all botnets, you know, it doesn't really matter. I don't cross DuckDuckGo, but I've, it feels like it's a little bit better uh, and feels nicer to use than Google and uh, Bing. I actually prefer Bing over Google as well, but sometimes, you know, Google gives you the best search results. So I, I, I tend to keep it for those uh, desperate moments, you know, when you cannot find what you need on another search engine. But usually I just use DuckDuckGo and pretend that it is a privacy uh, focused search engine, but it really isn't. Whatever. Let's not get into that best thing is to know all URLs uh, in your head, you know, and just use that and use bookmarks is also a good idea or link lord or something like that, whatever. Allow search suggestions. Uh, that will not work now really, but if we enable that, let's see what happens here. We'll try banana, nothing happens. But if we go back to address bar and select this show drop, drop down again, now I think we will get suggestions here from uh, so this is like a performance issue really you, it will get slower you have to fetch information from a, a search engine even if you're not logged in or uh, using it at the moment and it's also a privacy thing and whatever and I just think this is kind of useless you can just type what you want uh, it might sound like a smart thing you know getting suggestions uh, but what it really does is taking your focus, you, you want to search something, then something pops up and you start reading it and you forget what you were really searching for. Just raise your hand if that has never happened to you. No hands. Um, so disable that and then just type what you're searching for. Learn to touch type people. I think that's all with the search engines. Um, don't allow search uh, suggestions. Uh, privacy. Here I actually disable all these uh, block ads and Google pro malware protection because I don't trust them at all. They are probably doing the opposite what they are saying uh, saying here. And instead I rely on ad block, uh, uBlock origin and and uh, and um, uMatrix. But of course. Uh, I should recommend you using these features, but I don't use them myself. So you can search an address. So didn't we just do that search suggestion, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you see, these are really security uh, things and something you can think about. Do not track, ask websites not to track me. I don't know, I've, I've heard both uh, things about this, that if you enable this do not track thing, then you get, then it's easier to track you because it will uh, add that to your browser fingerprint. It will uh, have that do not track and it makes your browser fingerprint more unique just enabling that. But at the same time, some pages uh, respect this, but those pages are like the good guys, you know, the bad guys will not respect this anyway. So I don't know. I. I, I I have kind of given up on this anyways, you know, uh, so let's just not use it. Private windows show introduction and that means when you open a private window, control shift M, then you will get this uh, introduction here and you can disable it from, from this page, so, so whatever. Uh, web RTC IP handling broadcast IP for best web I, I, I'm not sure I like good performance but I also don't like broadcasting IP I don't know show typed history no 
don't do that uh, save browsing history session only I, I you see I have a lot of weird preferences here I know most people would like to save forever history and have browser sessions and suggestions and uh, yeah why not uh, let this artificial intelligence think for me you know but I think it's a good idea to to uh, uh, and with that said, I also sometimes use this uh, saving password thing, but whatever. Except cookies, session only, maybe all, I don't know. We can set this also with you, Matrix. Uh, but block third party cookies just sounds like a good idea, even if I know that uh, 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 uBlock Origin does all, all this for us. Mm. And. Cookies is like one of these weird things. Sometimes you cannot need, want the cookies, you know. Uh, it's nice to to have uh, GitHub, for example, remembering some of my options and things like that. Whatever. Downloads, just whatever. Save to that directory. Nice. Sync. This is uh, so that you can. S this will sync your settings uh, in uh, this Vivaldi configuration. If I would open it in a laptop or something and. Or it is a laptop, but uh, if I uh, on a different computer, I could sync uh, the settings, and I think it also syncs uh, tabs and whatever. I, I'm not really sure. I don't use it. Smooth scrolling is something that I have realized that I don't like. It's uh, it it gives me a headache. Uh, I I don't know. I think it's because I don't use a compositor, so it looks just weird, and uh, I don't want to use smooth scrolling and I don't want to see that guy in the shower either annoying hardware acceleration when available sure uh, spatial navigation what's that navigate between links and elements by holding shift and pressing the arrow keys huh. it sounds kind of interesting but whatever I just whatever might cause website uh, in compatibility issues or use this that doesn't do sounds a bit weird to me I don't know not sure if this setting is related to that bug I had we I will investigate that but whatever let's just leave it as it is then you have these this interesting uh, I don't know why this isn't on the privacy tab but here you can set permissions for uh, websites uh, permission to broadcast sound, of course, we want that so we can listen to uh, music and stuff. Uh, notifications, I prefer to have that on Ask so I can, yeah, of course. But the rest here, I, I block all of it. No geolocation, no camera, no microphone, no motion sensors, even if I don't have any. No Bluetooth devices, don't have any MIDI devices. So it, it's like weird that you even have to set this. And pop-ups block, of course. Play image animations, loop, okay, good. Load images, always never cached. This is also a setting that you can set here with this little icon here. I um, guess it will not be that obvious here now, but if we set this to load images never, then it will disable all the images on the page and not load any images. This can be good uh, in, in certain circumstances and on certain web page pages. You can also set it to only load images from your cache or just always just load them uh, in best way. You can set a default web page zoom, uh, and that is this, you know, that zooms the, the web page. This doesn't affect the UI, but it affects the, the web page. You can set this to, a, to something else than 100%. And I actually, because I'm old, and uh, so I rather have 120% uh, larger text, uh, maybe sometimes a little broken <laughs> lay layout and stuff, but I, it's just easier to read. And I, I like, uh, for me, text is the most important thing uh, on the internet. So it's good to have that large and nice. So now I think all pages will be 120% here. Uh, but whatever. Use control scroll to zoom page, I like that. Uh, use tab zoom, this will uh, make it so that you can have different zoom sizes on different uh, um, tabs, which is just good. Disable internal PDF uh, viewer, disable widevine plugin, which is uh, that uh, Netflix thing. 
Um, no flash plugin. Uh, reader, whatever, let's not get into that. Uh, really, I don't really use it that much, but uh, you can open a reader mode uh, by clicking this little guy here, reader view. I wonder what this is. Content has been blocked. <laughs> All right, it's already blocking stuff. This is reader view, so to make it even easier to read. Uh, don't use it that much, but maybe I will start using it because I think it's a good feature and it's nice that, that it's built in. You can also change the themes and stuff here if you would like that. Whatever, and then I always set the uh, like minimum size here, 10, standard, let's set that to, I like serif as a standard, and then I set the serif to my favorite serif font, which is shorter, and I like Noto Sans, even if it is Google, I don't care, it's a good uh, Sans serif font, and I use hack for the monospace font. Because this, as I mentioned, fixes here. It's a terrible font to have the web pages uh, automatically set it for you. You never know how they will look. Some pages still uses this. You can, uh, whatever, let's not get into that. But there you have it. The default uh, settings you can uh, that I use. And I kind of talked about all of them. You don't have to copy copy my, my preferences at all here. But now you know my, my reasoning uh, behind them, at least some of them. Uh, if you watched the last video, you understand that we will uh, fix this stupid uh, look that we have here and make it yeah, in a different different way. Ah, um, so, thank you for watching. Next video, we, we, we kind of um, do things off the browser and set up uh, window rules and uh, a key binding, it will be kind of an i3 specific, but also not really, you know, it can be interesting to see these uh, special flags and stuff that you might want uh, to, to execute Vivaldi with. Uh, thank you for watching. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.